How's it going, everybody? This is Dave Meltzer. We're going to be here with Brian Alvarez for the next two hours talking pro wrestling. We're also going to have Mike Mooneyham join us, uh, wrestling columnist for the Charleston Post Courier. And it's probably a pretty apropos day to have him on because uh, Mike Mooneyham has actually been following the company that uh, preceded World Championship Wrestling, Jim Crockett Promotions, uh, for longer than almost any person that's still a wrestling fan. I wasn't going to say anyone alive, but... Pretty much most of those people from the early 60s are not fans today. He goes back to the 60s. We'll be talking about the history of Jim Crockett Promotions, World Championship Wrestling, the future of professional wrestling. Uh, if you have not heard, and I'm sure most of you already have, uh, it is an inevitability, barring something totally unforeseen, that the World Wrestling Federation, within the next couple of days, will officially purchase the tape library of World Championship Wrestling and the rights to use the name World Championship Wrestling. I do not know or believe that they are going to purchase the contracts that's probably all being worked out, what they will do as it uh, pertains to the contracts, and, and at that point, how they are going to handle it, whether they will run it as a separate entity or whether they will just you know, bring in five or ten guys that they want and mix them into the WWF uh, to do an interpromotional angle from the start. Um, I, don't, I don't believe that they've actually, I mean, I, well, I shouldn't say, uh, I would, actually I should say, I cannot imagine that they would have spent any time on this, and the reason I say this is because as of Sunday, they had not spent much time talking about it, and Monday and Tuesday are killer days. So today would be the first day they would even, you know, I mean, they're, they're busy putting together, you know, television Monday and Tuesday, so they weren't having any long meetings about, like, how they're going to handle this thing. Now, one thing that they did do is, um, God, did I write the name of the Sakani? They hired a firm called Sakani to look into uh, how to market this new videotape library that they're going to have, because they'll probably end up with ECW videotapes as well. And I think that they will probably try to create some sort of an on-demand service through digital TV where, you know, you can, you know, buy for like $5, you know, certain videotapes, uh, you know, historical tapes that they'll throw out there like crazy. Um, they certainly have the footage now. Uh, considering they have their own footage for 40 years, they probably got about 20 years of footage of, um, you know, the Turner stuff, the former Turner stuff. Uh, all the ECW stuff from the last you know, it's been about eight, seven, eight years, um, to put together a 24-hour wrestling channel with tons of old footage, if that's what they choose to do, and it's an idea that they batted around, and it's not, probably, it's hard to say if that's a good idea or a bad idea, um, because we don't know what the future of wrestling will be. If wrestling, if wrestling is not that pop, if they if they set out to put out a, a channel in two years, and in two years wrestling is not that popular, and it's not such a good idea, if wrestling's Hits another peak, uh, maybe a hell of a good idea. Brian, how are you doing today? I'm uh, feeling human again. Are you? Starting. To I got physically. I, I, what what time did you finish the issue? Got uh like two o'clock. Hey, remember yesterday oh. when we were talking about writing it over the weekend, and I was going off on. Well, I wrote the whole thing over the weekend. You could have at least written the historical thing. Blah blah blah. Well, I rewrote the whole thing. So everything I said yesterday totally out the window. I, what I, knew a that, day. I knew that I knew that whatever it was going to be, it was going to have to, it was going to end up going down to the wire, and I would have to start the story. I, I ended up, uh, I guess I ended up in bed at two fifteen, and I was really happy because I thought all day long it was going to be you know three thirty or four, and I wasn't looking forward to that. But um, you know, uh, then I had to chop up the issue, get rid of all the independent news, you know, to to uh, fill the issue up with the, the uh, a brief history of not brief, it's five pages, um, a story story on all of these different things between the end of wrestling on the Turner Networks, uh, the end of World Championship Wrestling as we know it. Uh, you know, the more, you know, with every page, uh, I grew sadder and madder because it was like this company had this business. You know, it was three years ago. They had the greatest talent that any company ever had assembled. They were the most powerful wrestling company in the world, they had the backing of this multi, you know, million, billion, multi-billion dollar company. They had great time slots, and they pissed it away due to arrogance, stupidity, and overall, a total lack of understanding of what wrestling fans want to see when they turn on wrestling. Yeah. And it's just so sad. You know, I, and, and today, all day, all I've been doing is uh, interviews from various newspapers on this, and with every interview, I get madder and madder. Um, because they're going like, well, you know, what exactly happened? And I was like, they gave people horrible, a horrible product and horrible television. They had no idea what wrestling fans wanted. And that's the bottom line. They, the people who were in the company, there wasn't, I mean, Bischoff, 
you know, I mean, I, I got to give him, you know, when you go through this history of this World Championship Wrestling, you really got to give Bischoff a lot of credit. Because when he came in in 93, it was in many ways deader than it is than it, than it is now. I mean, the ratings were lower. Um, the house show attendance was lower. The buy rates were higher. The buy rates were a lot higher. But aside from pay-per-view, um, they were in worse shape then than they are now. So Bischoff took it, and, you know, with signing the WWF talent and uh, bringing in, you know, the international stars, your Malenkos and Benoits, Jerichos, and all those guys that everybody, you know, had never, had, that were never exposed in this country except by ECW, which was seen by a limited audience, getting a lot of the Mexican talent, of course the WWF talent, creation of Nitro, all these things. I remember now, back at the time, when he signed Hogan, everybody thought that was a dumb idea because of how much money it cost him to get Hogan. But, you know, Hogan was worth it until the last two years. When he signed, well, I guess ultimately you'd say he killed the company, though. Um, mm -hmm. uh, when he put Nitro on, I remember, hey, I remember this one real well. Uh, everybody, he was the, Eric Bischoff, when he announced Nitro, was the laughing stock of this industry. How, you know, this little WCW is going to go head to head with Raw and the USA Network. And on the very first head to head week, they beat Raw. So, I mean, it wasn't like it was this build and it took time. They beat them from the first week. They were dueling evenly for six months and then they shot by them when Hall and Nash came and they, and they moved the show to two hours instead of one hour. Uh, Nitro was the big hit on cable television for several years. And then, then when they had it all, they thought it would last forever, and nothing lasts forever. That's about uh, as good a wrap-up as you're going to get. <laughs> okay. Um, I have nothing I, more to add. Uh, the, but we'll talk, we'll be, we can talk more about this. we got a lot, obviously a ton of emails. Um, I guess we could talk a little bit about SmackDown from last I night. I want to mention one thing about that tape library idea, though, that I was just thinking about. I mean, you've done The Observer for like, uh, what, 20 years now, 21 19 years. 19 years, okay. And wrestling's been up and down. And overall, your business has stayed pretty good, right? Um, yeah, I mean... Through all the I periods. Guess, yeah, I mean, during that down period in the mid-90s, I didn't go down at all. Okay, so you've got, like, you know, you've got a hardcore base of readers that are hardcore fans that love wrestling that will buy a wrestling product no matter what, Right. Well, you know, you lose some and get some, but well, I know what you're saying. Generally speaking, yes. Oh, okay. you're right. So I'm thinking that if a wrestling channel were started, a 24-hour channel, and it was like you were talking about, you know, buy on demand, and they had a videotape library, you could buy WWF videos from 40 years back, you know, WCW, ECW. I mean, that's something that the hardcore fans are going to be very interested in. And if they own this library, their cost are going to be very low. They're just going to be putting this stuff on the air, and, you know, people are going to buy it. And I think that there's enough hardcore fans, and there's far more than enough footage to make that thing maybe not like a huge, giant success, but at least profitable, and maybe really profitable. Depends on how they Even handle Even in a down it. period. Uh, depends on how they handle well, yeah, just okay. because I just think just because of the audience that it would attract, you know, the hardcore fans that have loved wrestling forever. I mean, we still get emails now for people to go, you know, I hate the current product, but I'll still read about it. You know, and these are people that are going to go, oh, my God, I can go back and get some Bruno matches. I can go back and get Flair and Steve. I can get anything I want. On this You're right. Buy right. on demand. Um, I don't know if they'll spend money on it, though. But they may. I they think may. for five bucks, they would. Um, depending on time frame. Especially if they're going right. to get, like, you know, if this is airing, they're going to get a master copy that they can videotape right off the TV. It's not like getting, like, a 16th generation copy of something that, right. um, you know, 15 tape traders have gone through before it got to you. This is, like, right out of the library, right on your TV, popping a tape, and you got it. Yeah. Um, that may be, that may be the most valuable thing that they're getting. Mm-hmm. I think they probably think it is. Um... Anyway, I want to talk about uh, I want to talk about SmackDown for a little while. Uh, SmackDown was not a good show from almost every account. Um, I got so much negative feedback last night from people between the first hour of SmackDown. I guess that there was um, two out, two matches in the first hour. There was this incredibly long interview segment with The Rock and Steve Austin that the people live hated. It may it may end up being good television, but people were chanting refund. I mean, it never ended. And uh, anyway, taped right? Up, what taped? Yeah, taped. Yeah, so they weren't yeah. even out there in front of the people. No, no. So anyway, it started with a Raven and Chris Jericho hardcore match, which ended up in Steve Regal's office. Raven won the match, 
but they destroyed Steve Regal's office, and Steve Regal was mighty upset about that. Um, so he said that Raven would have to be against the Big Show and Kane. So I guess he's going to be the one to direct traffic in that match and like take bumps for both of them. In that uh, at WrestleMania, he's added nice, <laughs> great, great, uh, great role to be in. Uh, let's see. Then um, K. Quick, Steve Blackman, and Grandmaster. Well, actually, they lost to X-Pac, Justin Credible, and Albert uh, when K. Quick uh, had to do the job. Uh, let's see. So I guess those were the two matches in the first hour. Uh, they had an entering interview with Taz, um, who I guess is going to do something with uh, Stephen Richards. Uh, then they had a backstage altercation with Hunter and Undertaker. I guess the deal is is that um, Hunter took him to the dressing room, and that Stephanie and the police are there waiting to arrest him for violating the restraining order. Stephanie is deciding whether or not to press charges. They hold Undertaker in the dressing room uh, rather than take him to jail. So Undertaker's kind of like on a, list, a house arrest. Uh, then uh, they do the big interview with Rock and Austin. Uh, no blows or anything like that. Just, you know, talked about it. You know, what, what else do you Austin said that uh, if anything happened to Deborah, he's going to hold The Rock responsible. And The Rock said that uh, he doesn't want anything to happen to her, but if it does, it is not his fault. Um, Austin, you know, says he wants the belt because it shows you're the number one guy. Of course, Rock wants to keep the belt. Uh, the fans in, in, in this situation and all night, and this is what we talked about yesterday, they are entirely pro-Austin. In fact, they were confiscating Rock Sucks signs all night long again <laughs> last night. You know what's kind of uh, funny? You think they'll turn him heel? No. Because it's like when you get a heel and people start to cheer him, they'll turn him baby face. But then you get a baby face and they start to boo him and they freak out and start confiscating signs. Well, the reason I say that is because they're confiscating the signs. Yeah. If they weren't confiscating the signs, they would just go, well, we'll go with the flow and we'll turn him heel. But the fact that they're going to confiscate signs means they don't want anyone at home to know that this stuff's going on. So then, you know, you know what I'm saying? Because thunderous boos. Well, I've, I've got a feeling when we watch the show, we're not going to hear those thunderous boos. You can only hide them for so long. Uh, you cannot hide them on live TV. You're right. So anyway, after an hour of this, uh, they end up with Hunter and the Big Show against Kane in a handicap match, which I think Big Show choke slams and pins Kane. And I think they still beat on Kane afterwards. And Undertaker finally beats up the police, um, comes out. Neither shot nor arrested. Well, they're not real police, as we later find out. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. I thought you were <laughs> thought being facetious. <laughs> okay, so anyway, um, he beats up the police and runs out, and uh, Undertaker arrives beating up the cops, uh, gets in the ring, but Triple H and Big Show are beating him up since he's still handcuffed. Um, so he beats up the pol all these police while he's handcuffed. Pretty cool. Oh, God. Um, let's see. Helmsley destroys uh, both Undertaker and Kane with a chair. Then the police run in. And they hold Undertaker down, and then uh, Triple H then makes it clear that the police, in fact, are not real police. So they handcuff Kane, and he goes and gets his sledgehammer. Um, and I think uh, he hits Kane with a sledgehammer. So anyway, that's the basic gist. Uh, Edge, Christian, and Rhino took on the Dudleys with Spike Dudley, which ended up in a DQ when um, I think Edge hit Bubba with a chair. A lot of those chairs. And then after the match, Rhino speared Spike through the table, which... I guess his his new role, and I was very sad when I found out the kind of deals they are offering these new wrestlers. Uh, you do not want to be a wrestler who's going through tables right now. Uh, a new wrestler coming in the WWF in in the role of you know a little guy who's there to get killed. Uh, the money's not good enough. And then um, main event was Rock against Angle and Benoit in a handicap match. And uh, what do you think? You'll Rock never guess who does the job here. Kurt Angle didn't. No, he didn't. Did he? Uh, I think Rock pins Kurt Angle with a... I think Rock pinned Benoit. Uh, let me... I thought he pinned Kurt Angle with a... Regardless, it was not Rock doing the job. No, 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 no. But anyway, it ended up setting up um, Angle. Uh, Benoit had the cross face on Rock, and Angle put Rock's foot on the ropes and ended up with Brock... I mean, with Benoit and Angle teasing more for the match they're going to have at WrestleMania. Then afterwards, Austin came out. And Austin and Rock had their confrontation, and the crowd was all for Austin. So anyway, that was that was the main stuff there. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, I think Rock uh, Rock brought him on angle, and then uh, Benoit comes in. He beats on Rock. Rock has a spine buster and puts him in the sharpshooter. Then Angle walks away laughing while Rock's got the sharpshooter on Benoit. 
And then uh, Vince McMahon comes in the ring and tells Rock to break the hold. Uh, Rock gives Vince the rock bottom. Then uh, Kurt Angle puts the ankle lock on Rock. And then Austin comes out. So anyway, uh, that is the scoop from there. Uh, NBC finished in third place in the ratings. And they're blaming on that horrible Saturday night rating they had this week. Uh, 1.6. Not even 1.8. And, uh, by the way, if anyone says anything about target demographic, in the male 1834 demographic, they did an 0.8. Uh, so, anyway. Uh, I thought it was so funny reading that AP article about the 1.6. And they're talking about, you know, we actually had researchers go back to the history of television to try and find a lower number. And it's like they found an ABC drug special or something that did a 1.6. But... Just the fact that they were so, they wanted to know so badly if um, it was the lowest ever. I just thought that was kind of funny. Uh, Dream Stage officially confirmed Ken Shamrock will not be fighting Igor Vovchanchin due to his neck injury. It's going to be Trey Teligman against Igor on Sunday. And on the website, on late Saturday night, very late Saturday night, I'm going to, uh, we'll be updating um, basically match by match, actually round by round, not even match by match, round by round. Um, of the Pride show, at least until probably, certainly till 2 a.m. and maybe till 3 a.m. Pacific time. Um, whenever I just decide that I've had enough, I'm just going to go to bed. But uh, until that, until remember that point, when you said that last time? Yeah, they sat in the. Go- <laughs> I was up till 5 a.m. Hey, you know that was what was bad about that though is I was really only doing that for you, you know. So you would wake up and get all those. Jokes and I went that to I bed. Making. Well, if you saw it in the morning. I did wake up in the morning to see that. That was classic. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I, I was up, uh, updating round by round. Well, once, once the uh, Hoist Gracie Sakuraba fight started, I figured I got to stay there till the end, and that was like four in the morning. So I'm updating it every round, and uh, you know, they end up going 90 minutes, longest fight in history practically, and it's like it gets up on the website like a day later or something. I know. Like, I mean, I knew that that was the was dark a, days of the uh, website, the real yes. dark days. Yeah, I know. My, how times change. Yeah, but at least night, I got the updates while I was asleep. Yeah. Well, la- last night, what was, you know, so now we have a different version. Now the website's doing so well that, like, when there's a big news story like yesterday, if so many people log on, then it gets knocked out of alignment. So, <laughs> <laughs> so they still didn't, <laughs> the, the, the fusion backed out of the deal. We were, we were still late on the Our story. server backed out of the deal. What? Our server backed out of the deal. Yeah, I know. Went up there last night, it was like, headline section, nothing. Oh, no, uh-oh. Yeah. Went to the archive, <laughs> nothing. Oh, no, Here we go. Well, it was fixed. I want to thank the folks at Thin Data for getting it fixed. Actually, pretty pretty quick. But, uh, yeah, that's what happens when you're, you're rushing to get a story out, when everyone knows there's a big story. Mm-hmm. Oh, well. Uh, let's see. What did you think of Monday Night's Wrestling? 60% said Raw was better. 13% said Nitro was better. God, we're only going to be doing this one for one more week. This business is changing so much, and I don't think a lot of people realize just how much. Except for the wrestlers who are negotiating contracts in the last two days. I know. Oh, boy. Didn't watch Raw 2%. Didn't watch Nitro 13%. Didn't watch Raw or Nitro 12%. I got a feeling next week a lot of people are going to watch Nitro. Just got that feeling, at least among our listenership. They haven't done anything to publicize it yet. I mean, I haven't seen a lot of um, mainstream of, like, you know, what they're going to do. Yeah. Have you heard anything about what they're going to do on Monday? I have no clue. I don't even know if Steiner's wrestling. Scott, that is. Rick, hopefully, is not. <laughs> That's another story. Um, you know, I think d- there's, like, so many people, and I can guarantee this because I know that I'm one of them, that just don't quite get it yet. You know what I mean? It's like I can just see myself two weeks from now, like on the on the uh, Monday when uh, Nitro does not air, April just all of a sudden sitting back and going, what in the hell happened? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to be sitting there going, like, what do I do on Monday night when I don't have four hours of wrestling to watch? I know. I mean, I may have to watch, like, the end of a football game or something, like, when, in September. That's weird. You know, I think one of the reasons, um, I, I mean, there's still an incredible amount of people who are in denial about all this. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I think that people have been, you know, what can I say? It's, in fact, I will start reading emails <laughs> in just a second. Um... Any other news to get to? Uh, I don't think so. Before I start. No. Okay. You mentioned on your site that WWF could own WCW within the next week to ten days. I'm sure you know that things can change on a dime sometimes. So I ask this. Just say the deal gets done in the next couple of days, even as late as Monday afternoon. Would Vince McMahon then get to book or at least control the final Nitro? No. Could he make a call and keep Bischoff or anyone he doesn't want from appearing on TV? 
no. Or do you think out of respect he'll let whatever happens happen, even if he already owns it? I think he's not going to own it by Monday. I think that's the key. On a related note, since Fusion is officially out of the running, does that keep Bischoff from appearing on TV Monday? No, because he's under contract to World Championship Wrestling as a consultant, and he's the head of creative for World Championship Wrestling. I believe you mentioned he was allowed to so this week because he was still in the running. No, he was allowed to because, you know, partially because he was still in the running, but he was put in charge of creative at the time that the sale was going to go through, and he's not been relieved of being in charge of creative because what's the point? There's two weeks left. Why not? You know what I mean? Yeah. So, anyway, last night on the WrestleManiac show, Lawrence Holmes said he thought it was funny how WCW is marketing next week. He said they're not marketing it as the end, but rather the season finale, which says to him, it's all a work. This is what well, I mean. That's nice that it says that to him. Yeah. It's, what it says to me is is that they, and I, I'm real interested to see how they say this on Thunder tonight. God, the last episode of Thunder is tonight. Anyway, the last wrestling show ever on tel- TBS, I shouldn't say ever, but ever for the foreseeable future, I mean, the 29-year run is over tonight because TNT didn't come along until 95. This is the last show on that station that I have been watching wrestling on uh, for 20-plus years, 23 years, when we started getting TBS on cable here in 78, 79. Unbelievable. I'm going to actually watch Thunder. I don't even think I'll fall asleep this time. (laughs) Anyway, uh, Jonathan Hood responded by saying, that if this is the case, this is McMahon-like genius. Why would it be? Well, it doesn't matter because it's not the case. So, <laughs> what, because they can swerve people? I mean, if they get like a... What are they, they haven't even built it up well. But anyway. You know, uh, here's say, what i got to say. It's annoying now to hear some of these emails in denial, but I can at least understand it. What's really going to be annoying is like uh, three weeks down the road when Vince actually does own it and the shows aren't airing anymore and we still get the letters. Saying it's all a work by Bischoff or something. Okay. Um, I, I mean, I remember, I remember in uh, 1984 when Vince bought Georgia Championship Wrestling. This is similar. In many ways, this is similar. And for those of you, you know, who who know history, what Vince did was when he bought Georgia Championship Wrestling was he then ceased to operate it. He did not run the cities. He did not run it as a separate organization. Of course, at that time, it would have been stupid to do so because he would have been competing with himself. Um, I think that there's a chance he will do it. But ultimately, ultimately, if he's running this as a separate organization, for now, he's running as a separate organization so he can do a promotion versus promotion feud. When they do the promotion versus promotion feud, there will be a winner and a loser. The winner of the promotion versus promotion feud will not be World Championship Wrestling. And when they lose, they are done. Unless so, Eric's booking it. <laughs> Eric's. <laughs> Actually, That's in true. that case, he'd probably put the WWF over. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> so I mean, ultimately, I mean, as far as as far as the videotape library and as far as the name, it'll exist. But the the World Championship Wrestling is a separate entity. I mean, that will that will exist. That will that may exist for a little while to build up a loss, but long term, it will not exist. Now, how are they going to do that? Are they going to give them heat? They can't build it back up with no TV. No, 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 they, no, 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 no. The idea would be that they would they would get Viacom to clear a TV time slot for them. Okay. I mean, without TV, no. If they, they if they don't have TV, you know, it's like no, of course not. Now the problem with that is means is that if they're gonna at best have one TV, as opposed to the, the many that WWF has, so they're gonna be seen as the minor organization anyway because they don't have as much TV. And the other one also is that at best they're gonna get, um, you know, I mean they, that, that would that would entail another night of television taping. And, you know, those guys that work in the front office of the WWF, they're already going crazy with two nights of TV taping. Yeah. So. I kind of think that if, if they're really going to do something as far as pushing a separate organization, they almost have to hire, like, or create a new crew, even if it's just for the short term. You mean, you mean a, new, a new front office crew? But they're going to have to, then they'll have to, then they'll have to dilute the, the front office crew that they have because all new people, that's not going to be the answer. You're going to have to have some of the smart people in WWF running that thing. Yeah, split it. Well, then that weakens, that weakens WWF. Yeah, but they're going to have to look at it as, well, you know, this is going to be... I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm not saying that's wrong. That's probably the, that is the way to do it. Mm-hmm. But uh, what are your thoughts about the gimmick battle royal? You heard about that, right? Oh, okay. Like, you didn't hear... They're doing, like, uh, Doink the Clown and the Gobbledygooker and all these people in a gimmick battle royal at WrestleMania. I think Iron Sheik and Nikolai Volkov are going to be in it, which... Oh, great. Uh, yeah, I know. Well, what I'm assuming is that somebody comes in and, like, beats them all up. And you know who I think it's probably going to be? Kane. Hogan. 
I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, maybe not. Uh, no, I don't know that. I don't know that Hogan's going to be there. It wouldn't. I was confused seeing that list of names because earlier they said it was going to be the best gimmicks. <laughs> I know, I know. Those, these are all the dumbest gimmicks, right? Yeah. Okay, Bring back Keel Hopper and. Is he in it too? I don't know. Where's that I, list? I didn't, I didn't see his name. The list here somewhere. I saw. It. Gimmick Battle Royal: Bushwhackers, Doink the Clown, Brother Love. Sergeant Slaughter, Michael Hayes, who they call Freebird Michael Hayes, Nikolai Volkov, Iron Sheik, and the Gobbledy Gooker. Okay. But the list is growing, <laughs> rumor says. <laughs> the old timers battle royal. I hope they I hope they don't put Flair in there. Everyone's gonna have to go into the bottom rope. <laughs> Seriously, dude, how the hell is Iron Sheik gonna go over the top rope? Uh, he can't. I think he's just gonna leave. There's that no is way. Right, that's, da- that's dangerous. Yeah. We got Mike Mooneyham on the line. Mike, how you doing today? Doing good, guys. How about y'all? Yeah, we're doing all right. Mike. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long time, to... Dave. Twenty nine years. Twenty nine years. Tonight's the last show ever on CBS. Yeah, it's uh, it's a, it's really a sad occasion. But I mean, you know, we all saw it coming, didn't we? I didn't see the cancellation of the TV coming. I really didn't. Well, um, I mean, as far I mean, as the WCW being sold, yeah, the company. I mean, as far as WCW being sold, yeah, I mean, that, that's been obvious for months, but I figured that, like, whoever got it would at least have to fulfill the TV. Yeah. That, well, that one that one hit me. I was not expecting... I mean, I knew that they were going to end up with one TV and they were going to end up canceling Thunder, yeah. which, is, which is probably for the best anyway, but, yeah. you know, when, when that thing happened, it was like, wow. Well, you know, we, we always talk about these cycles in wrestling. I mean, that's been forever, and, you know, you just see things on a, on a downturn. I mean, we've seen... We've seen the WWF sliding for some months now, and um, WCW. I don't know. They would just, just they just seem to be the worst managed business in history. I mean, <laughs> you, know, you, you you think about three years ago and all the talent they had, and the show was hot, and um, you know you can go back to July '98 at the Georgia Dome with the big Goldberg Hogan match, and I mean there was just a lot of excitement. But even even at that point, you know, even there was... Uh, then, even then they were not running it as a business because Hogan and Goldberg was a pay-per-view main event and they gave it away on free TV to pop a rating. You're right. I mean, you know, they started making such dumb decisions and like that. You know, they gave away... And like that was probably days. also... That was probably three to five months too early for Goldberg to win that title. Yeah. So, you know, we saw these, these major decisions botched and we saw a lot of guys mishandled. Um... You know, maybe nobody could have predicted that they were going to be out of business in three years, but you certainly saw a lot of uh, alarming signs even back then. I did in September '99. I said that if they do not change what they are doing, that they will not be able to give these tickets away. Yeah. And in fact, that happened. Lately, they give many, many tickets away, and most of the people who they give tickets away do not even come. How and that's that? why they have empty. That's why they have all these empty seats of TV tapings. Yeah, and, and you know, I've, I've got a lot of friends in WCW, and a lot of friends who are staunch defenders of WCW. And um, you know, I kept telling these guys, look, you know, maybe, maybe if, if, um, you know, maybe if these things were done a little bit differently, then at least you could. We could, uh, they could prolong the company somewhat, but I mean, it was just like one bad thing after another. The guys in charge really weren't in charge. Everybody was just so protective of their own spots, and I mean, it was just, it was like a recipe for failure. So, in a way, yeah, I'm sad. I'm kind of surprised that you know, uh, such a strong tradition is now dead. But I guess, in a way, I'm not surprised at all, and I'm just, I'm surprised that it took so long. I thought it was really depressing. Was I mean, I've gotten used to seeing all these arenas on TV that are empty. Yeah. But, um, I mean, even even like if there were, you know, 2,000 people there, it's like those are 2,000 hardcore fans. Very hard. And then I'm watching Thunder last week, and there's your 2,000 hardcore fans, and like right in the middle of the show on national TV, they just start filing out. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, doing all of that taping in one night, I mean, even for a... Uh, a company with some good hot stuff on 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 air is is really you know is hard to do, but with the product they've had, I mean it's impossible to do. Mm-hmm. Um, Mike, I, I'm really curious about this because I actually talked to a reporter in Charlotte just a few minutes ago. Yeah. And when you're in and you're in Charleston, which is also in this in the same you know mm-hmm. part of the country, mm-hmm. what what I mean. 
because uh, he was asking me, like, you know, what do you think, like, you know, I mean, the Charlotte, Greensboro, Charleston, that part of the country, Atlanta. Right. I mean, this is the this is their wrestling. This is the end of their, you know, it's it's, it's that tradition that Jim Crockett Sr. started. You're right. I mean, I mean, the Crockett's have nothing to do with it. It, it ends, you know, literally Monday, the tradition of that Georgia championship wrestling, which sort of, Sort of mer basically merged with Crockett around 1985 on the Superstation. Yeah, that ends that ends Monday as well. Um, what? I mean, even though you know it's 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 like uh, what could I compare it to? You know, I mean, it's like a it's, it's like a like dynasty, a almost like the end of a dynasty, and it's something that we, you know, we in this part of the country kind of held near and dear to our hearts. I mean, it, it's uh, you know, it's kind of like the end of Elvis, I guess, to a music fan. Um, Maybe maybe it's like when the Giants and the Dodgers moved, but they still existed. They just moved. Yeah, I mean this is you know this is sort of the end. I mean maybe maybe a lot of these guys will hook up with uh, some other promotion and they'll get a TV outlet and um, you know it looks but like Vince is pretty much going to get the. How do you the, how do you start up and fight Vince though? It can't be done. No, you don't. And and I don't see anything anytime soon competing on a on any kind of a national basis. I mean, if anything, they'll build a some kind of maybe a regional promotion down here. And to me, that would be fine because personally, and we've talked about this on many occasions. You know, I never felt comfortable with Bischoff what he was doing. Um, I mean, he pretty much almost told me in, in in these words that you know he didn't care about the the. Wrestling fans in this part of the country, or well, he proved that. Yeah, I mean, and he proved it. He insulted. I mean, it was like a slap in the face to people down here. And I talk to wrestling fans every day, and a lot of the fans I talk to are no longer fans. I guess I couldn't classify them as fans, but they were fans for many years, and they, you know, they stuck with the old NWA and they stuck with WCW in its early years, but they got tired of being slapped in the face. I mean, they eventually took it personally when uh, when Bischoff would come into these areas and either either WCW would have terrible shows or guys like Flair and Arn Anderson would you know it was uh, would be you know, put in such unflattering storylines or uh, you know jobbed out to guys who these fans you know they were pretty smart fans and, and they didn't appreciate it and it, it was more it's more like an insult to uh, was, to this area. That was one of the things that I think that hurt is that they did not, and, and you know the Carolinas is the easy one to point to, but even on a national basis, they didn't understand the difference between heat and insulting the fans. They thought they were one and the same. Yeah, and they were wrong. And you know, yeah. Dave, and I'm sure you're going to outline this in the Observer, and you've done a great job over the last few years in, in pinning down all of these problems. But you know, when you when you look at this list of all of the things that went wrong. I mean, you know, I could have got a guy, a, 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 just an average wrestling fan off the street and put him in Atlanta and gave him a job as, as director of that company, and he could have probably done a better job. You know, it was almost really? like, how can you fail? How can you fail with a talent roster like this? How can you fail with the resources of the Turner Empire behind you? How do you, how do you not make this, this thing work, you know? I mean, he could have probably blown Vince out of the water three or four years ago. You know what it was? It's it's nothing lasts forever. Yeah. So you always have to prepare for the future, and you stop preparing for the future right. in this business that changes so quickly. Right. Um, you know, I mean, there's there's you know, I mean, you know, I'll give you an example. Hulk Hogan and Sting uh, in in the end of '97 did the biggest what would end up being what will end up being the biggest buy rate in the history of that company yeah. since the company's folding. Um, and they did they did the wrong thing that night too. Sure they, they did, did many nights. Um, but but two months later, Hogan and Sting had really cooled off. To this day, I think in their minds, and, and you know you, you know even like late last year and things like that, yeah. they still wanted to rekindle Hogan and Sting. Yeah. But the magic was gone. It's and gone. You got you, you got you got to create a new Hogan and a new Sting. You can't keep going back to the old Hogan and the old Sting. It's just like yeah. You know it, it's like for WrestleMania this year. You know, Steve Austin and Shawn Michaels was was the same period as WrestleMania 1998. Yep. If they came back now with Steve Austin and Shawn, Shawn Michaels, he's wouldn't he? You know, he'll come back to a big pop, but but he's made a WrestleMania same. main event. No, it wouldn't mean the same. You you know, if things happen. You you just can't. Uh, you know, you have to seize the opportunity when it's there. And they had so many opportunities to do things. You know, they had the the Hogan Hart, Bret Hart. They had so many great things they could have done. And we've already talked about Ric Flair. 
I mean, they could have given him a retirement tour and sent him in every, you know, big town in the country he's ever wrestled and, and culminated at, in Charlotte at Starcade and, you know, to 2001. I mean, what scenarios were right there in front of them that they just, you know, they just let well, you know, right through the and thing. And part of it also was um, just doing, I mean, they knew what the fans wanted, or at least some people did, and yeah. they just never gave it to them. I mean, yeah. After a year of build-up with Sting in those rafters, all the people wanted to see was him beat Hogan. Oh, red and instead, hot. Hogan had to come in, and I don't know who he talked to, or you know, if he talked to Nick Patrick, or if you know, he had the whole thing planned out in advance, yeah, or whatever. Right. But they totally screwed that up. You know, clean pinfall from and, and Hogan. And the other thing they did on that night took the air out of it and killed they, it dead. Yeah. They took the air out of it, and also they made the debut of Bret Hart into something flat because instead of Bret Hart saving the day, he looked like an idiot. He looked like an idiot because he was calling about it. He was complaining about a referee cheating when the referee didn't cheat. Yeah, yeah. They made every, they made a lot of guys. You're right. Look like fools in the process, and um, just you know, just so many things went wrong. And all of these new guys in the company, a lot of them have some talent. But um, you know, I was talking to Helmsley about this not too long ago, and um, he said he really thinks some of these guys are are damaged goods at this point. I mean, it's going to take it's going to take a long time to for fans to forget who these guys are and bring them back at some point and basically reinvent them because they've well, they've suffered so much damage in just the past year in WCW. Well, I think it's the the company is more damaged goods than the guys because I've seen in Japan when guys switch companies, guys yep. that were dead, mm -hmm. they somehow by by that new facelift it, yep. it it revitalizes them like a guy like Tenru. Who has been dead many times? Right. When he when he goes in there and he goes to like an all Japan and meets Kawada, it's sort of like wow, we haven't seen this match in twelve years. All of a sudden, you know, he can be the old Tenru again. That's um, right. And I think it's the same thing with like a Bill Goldberg. Bill Goldberg of, is is obviously dead as a ratings draw. Right. But if you start building up Bill Goldberg in The Rock or Bill Goldberg in Stone Cold, um, it'll be hot as hell. Yeah, I mean, he was a guy who yeah obviously was was major, big time hot. You know, you could do something with him, but then there's a lot of guys like Sean O'Hare who show, you know, show a lot of potential. And um, he'll 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 be okay. I think he'll be okay. You know, I think I think O'Hare is one who will be okay. Um, I think I think that the guys like uh, you know Shane Helms, those are the guys who need to be worried. Yeah. I'm not saying that he you know that, that they won't take him, but yeah. You know, there's you know unless they take it as a separate entity, they're not going to have room to bring in a Shane Helms. Yeah. Well, I tell you how things changed a year ago. We we're talking about three. Promotions with with all of that airtime, you know, with ECW, WCW, and the WWF, and now we're looking at we're looking at one company. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it all happened last year. We we saw a lot of it coming, but we didn't but see this much. We didn't see this. The one thing we didn't see coming was that these stations would cancel wrestling. Yeah. You know, that was the one that we. I mean, I, it's CNN kicking ECW off. Yeah, ECW folding. Yeah, but this was the one. Mike, you know, I'll ask you, you know, you've been covering wrestling for a long time, and you've been a fan of wrestling for, yeah. uh, what, close to 40 years, right? Right. Um, would you consider this the biggest story in the history of wrestling? Or, or let's, say my, let's, say, let's say in the last 30 years. Um, I would consider it one of the biggest stories. I don't know. You know, I feel like, uh, you know, there's still something going to come out of this. Um, certainly one of the biggest stories. Uh, as far as media wise, I don't know this. Uh, you know, personally, the Owen Hart, the death of the Owen Hart, Hart one, and, and the Jesse Ventura election, and, and you know, obviously got far more media, mainstream media attention. Yeah, but, but their I think ramifications this on wrestling, I, they're, they're, both of their ramifications on wrestling, were not close to this one. Yeah, I, I think this is going to have an effect for a long time. And I, you know, I think it hasn't really settled in that this could be the end of wrestling. You know, as far as we know it, um, and certainly, you know, being right here in this area, I mean, it's. Uh, yeah, it's it's big news, and I've had just tons of calls over the last couple of days of people who are finding out. You know, actually, I would say at least fifty percent of the callers think it's a work. <laughs> they I, well, think I mean, it's not the, real. The, the other thing too is is that ninety five percent of your wrestling fans, maybe ninety eight percent of your wrestling fans, get their are, are casual fans who get their information when they watch television. Yeah, that's and true. And there's been nothing on television. That anyone would know, that would acknowledge that this is the end. I mean, like if you're on the internet, you would hear it. Yep. But you know, you're on the internet. People that go on the internet know that half the stuff they read isn't true. That's right. So, and half the people on the internet are saying it's a work, or I don't know if it's half, but there are people on. So there, 
kind of like going, well, maybe yeah. it is. Yeah, a lot of people um, have called me have heard it on the radio or heard it through word of mouth, you know. And but it's been the word has been really slow to get out. Yeah, because because it hasn't been said on television. No. You know, and on TV last week they were saying season finale, and nobody knew what that means. No. You know, no. What, what? What? I mean, I. Well, I get, we'll see what they. We'll see what they do tonight. I want to go through uh, some of these things real quick. This is from Mike Gunner, who's a longtime friend of mine. He goes, if Vince buys WCW, do you see a place for Ric Flair there, and do you think he'd be allowed to retire with some dignity? Well, there's two. There's two answers to that question. Number one, I would be pretty confident that they'll have a place for Ric Flair. In, in either scenario of, an, of, a, of, a, of a quick invasion or a long-term build of the company, Ric Flair, more than anyone else, is the face of WCW, and I think if they want to have the real WCW, it's real important to have Ric Flair on the team. Plus, Ric Flair and Vince McMahon have always gotten along, so I think that, that he probably will end up there. As far as retiring with dignity, maybe, but, you know, there's a saying in, in, in WWF, and that is when you go there, you uh, leave your dignity at the door. I don't care who you are. I mean, there's no one. There's no one who goes unscathed there. Uh, it's from Dave, real quick. Uh, what's Kurt Angle's role at WrestleMania? He's going to wrestle Chris Benoit. It's from Andrew goes. Do you think that the, if the WF is the only team in town, so to speak, it's already gone to their heads, and the end result was the lackluster SmackDown that was taped last night? No, I think I, I don't think one has to do with the other. Um, who are the WWE names most likely to go? Again, it depends. It depends on what format and what storyline they want to take. Who would be the most likely? Uh, let's see, it's from Mike, who goes, I caught yesterday showing the archives, and I noticed you said quite a few times the downfall of WCW could be related to Bischoff spending and bad booking mistakes. However, I think the downfall could also be related to three little things. NWO, I think that it got so huge that there was only one place to go, that being down, and the lows were as high as the highs. Back in the summer of 96, I think it was the, till the tail end of 98, WCW ruled, and now they're paying the ultimate price. If they had played that angle right, I don't think it would have crashed so hard after that. Absolutely. They needed to give WCW some wins, of course. I mean, how many versions of the NWO were there? Three or four? It was a few too many. If they would have killed that angle... And they got worse every after, time. ...after its conception and then went from there, I don't think WCW would be where it is. That angle, you know, the, the way that angle played out was not the, probably the best way to play it out. But, I mean, the, the thing with the WCW, and Mike will attest to this, you know, when I was writing this, the, the article last night, it would take a book to do justice to what they did wrong. I mean, it, 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 it's, it's you could say, oh, you know, the Hogan Sting match we talked about. You could say the Goldberg losing Goldberg to Kevin Nash, the one finger touch, the Ric Flair heel turns that nobody wanted to see. I mean, but it was weak. David Arquette. The cruiserweights. David Arquette. Just Vince Russo in general. There's so many things, and they all caused it, and there was not, I mean, you cannot point to any one thing, and probably not even any ten things. Um, other than it was just, you know, total, total lack of foresight. And I think that if we're going to say it, it's, it's a lack of understanding by people in management as to what wrestling fans want to see when they watch wrestling. Right. They did not understand it. They thought if we swerve these people, you know, that means that we're smarter than them. It's not what it's about. It's about drawing money. And sooner or later, people got tired of being swerved and they didn't care. It's, it, it's not about swerves. It's not about. It's not necessarily even about angles. It's not necessarily about good wrestling matches. It's about giving the people, you know, like like the people leave the building happy. You know, sometimes they got to leave it mad because you you know you can't have them leave it happy every week. But you can't make them mad so much that they're just so mad. You know, there's a difference between the the the, the, the two kinds of heat like we talked about earlier. You know, the, you got to know the difference between the heat that they that they don't come back from. And the heat where they do come back from, and they thought it was all the same heat. When they're throwing garbage at you because they don't like the show, that's not good heat. And they thought that throwing garbage meant that the angle got over. <laughs> and, 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 and I guess it well, did. I mean, means in the beginning, yeah, in the beginning, it did. It, it did. I know. The, I, I know it did. That's but the funny part. But then at the end, it was a sign of, we hate this and we hate you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I remember, you know, talking to the guys at Nitro. Um, you know, the just horrible reaction, you know, when the thing was going down at, at, at those nitros when the show was over. All yeah. the fans who paid the money felt that they got ripped off. It's like, you know, how hard is it? I mean, granted, you need to have a good work rate, but they had a lot of good workers. Yeah. You know, I mean, how hard is it? The WWF, I mean, granted, you know, we had last night in Providence. They, they, they have their bad shows, too. But 8 out of 10, you know, they, you put the baby face over at the end. People leave happy. You keep the baby face strong. I mean, they always, they killed the guys the fans wanted to like, either by turning them too often to where no one cared about them. There's no one for the people to get behind for long-term to have faith in. And also, by in many cases, the baby faces who are the most popular, 
by continually making them impotent and never getting their revenge. And it's like, who wants to root for a baby face that gets his ass kicked? So they start rooting for the heels, right. and that doesn't, you know, that didn't work in the long run either. And you know something else? I mean, if you ever, I mean, we talk about the taping results every single week, but no matter what happens on Raw or SmackDown, I mean, the heel can just lay everybody out. But then as soon as the show goes off the air, the baby face makes his big comeback, lays everybody out, drinks a beer or whatever, <laughs> and everybody goes home happy. And sometimes, like very, very rarely, yeah. we'll read about a SmackDown where something bad happened at the end, and then it was over. And we're always like, oh, my God, that's weird. <laughs> and then it was like, hey, a, you... I can't even remember what it was, but it was probably like a year ago. WCW did a Nitro, and then after the show went off the air, they had this baby face make a big comeback or something like that. And me and you were like, wow, <laughs> I can't believe they did that. a smart thing to do. And, I mean, it, uh, why should... I just don't understand why they can't figure something so simple out that it doesn't matter what happens on TV. As soon as the show goes off the air, send the people home happy. I think this is the, the really perplexing thing about the whole situation. I don't think this had to happen. I mean, this is a premature death in my book. It just didn't have to. Didn't have to happen. It never. It, it never. It never had to. You had. You had everything going for you with this company. You had the television exposure. You had the company. If this company was a money-making company, AOL would never want to get rid of it. And then you'd have AOL, Time Warner, the biggest media conglomerate that there's ever been behind you. Yeah. You know, I mean, it didn't have to be a... It certainly didn't have to be a money loser. And how it ever got to where it lost the amount of money to this last year, that's absolute mismanagement. Well, like you said, blowing up a lot of, uh, you know, wrecking a lot of limos, doing, you know, just throwing away money, actually. And, and you know, we won't even talk about these... Uh, Overinflated contracts, but I guess just a lot of very, very poor decisions. It's from Garen Shea, who goes to bring real closure on Monday. I think WCW should bring back Baby Doll to finally show us those pictures after 13 years. <laughs> you know what's so funny about that is that Baby Doll Dusty Angle that went nowhere because they dropped it. Yeah. People talk about that People one. People will never forget it. No. People will never forget it, right? I think it's like 1986, 1987, whatever. It was many, many years ago. There were 50 angles just like that in the last two years that were dropped, and people just, you know, because in those days, the angles actually did make sense at the end. Yeah, and this yeah. was such an aberration that people to this day remember it because every other angle did have some sort of, sort of a climax. Right. And that one didn't. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> you're probably hearing about that one forever. This is from Jay Tan, who goes, this is Brian, was talking about 24-hour wrestling channel. I turned to Turner South. Um, and notice an ad about uh, something called WCW Classics. Looks like it's a show, like Brian talked about, showcasing old matches. A lot of flair matches were advertised on a channel. It seems to be in the South. Are you familiar with the show? Yeah, WCW Classics is on, but when they sell the tape library, that show will also be canceled. It'll probably, it will probably still be on a little bit for a couple of weeks after this. It's been on for a little while. Dusty Rhodes is the um, host of it, as a matter of fact. Uh, do you think it's possible for a wrestler's union to be formed? I think less likely now than any time in the last seven years, so no. Uh, no, because the wrestlers are going to be scared to death. To, <laughs> because true. no one will, they, you know. Will the WF acknowledge on TV when they purchase WCW or just have a few of their wrestlers show up? I would think they'll just have the wrestlers show up. It'd be much more dramatic that way. Uh, let's see. If WF were to start a 24 hour channel, do you think they would show old pay per views from the big three or save those for home video and mainly show old TV? I, I mean, you, there's not a big market for home video of really old pay per views. I think that they just will use that footage for, um, you know, uh, I mean, if they do that, and they certainly have the footage to do that, um, you know, I think they would put that on TV. Uh, let's see. Wouldn't it be nice if they brought Vince Russo back on Monday and then have him wrestle Rick Steiner? <laughs> God. And then Rick Flair could shave his head after that. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I like that. Yeah. Uh, besides the WF, are there any other interested buyers of WCW? No, not really. I mean, there were, but not anymore. Uh, let me see. Uh, with regard to Rock and Austin, would it have been a better idea to, to tease the Austin turn earlier than they did? That way they could have scheduled a tour of Florida in the weeks prior to WrestleMania. I'm sure if the Rock was in his home state, you get a better face reaction, and the fans would accept Austin as a heel. It's totally illogical to assume the Texas fans will turn on Austin instead of Rock. Uh, I think they're assuming that McMahon's heel heat would be strong enough that uh, it'll work, and they may not do it now. You know, I mean, hey, plans change in wrestling on a moment's notice. Yeah, that's true. Uh, do you think Vader will show up for the final episode of Nitro? Uh, no. Uh, oh, I would say almost for sure no. Uh, and could you please have Tom Zink on your show again? He's the best guest. Oh, yeah, we'll have him on probably probably fairly soon. 
Um, let's see. This is from Ben. I live in Canada. We don't get nitro until Tuesday night, so I didn't see that unholy beating Conan took until yesterday. I understand that Rick Steiner has a tough guy rep, and I was wondering if you know any stories that would perpetuate this myth, or does he actually have the skills? Well, he was a very good college wrestler, and he tied Chuck Palumbo up in a knot about a week or two ago, and he that that thing with Conan was totally unprofessional. Oh yeah. You know, um, what were you? You know, I mean, I now there was no double cross on that finish. That finish actually went down the way it was supposed to. But I mean, as far as like you know the potatoing and beating him up, I mean that was. You know, he, he beat him up. Oh, we've been seeing Rick Steiner do that for like 12 years now. Yeah, Lash LaRue. Yeah, but it's been a lot worse in the last couple of weeks. I know, yeah. It's because uh, he knows. Pop? He knows that uh, Eric, well, Eric was there, Eric's his friend, and now he knows that uh, there's only a couple shows left. Why not? <laughs> why not? Really, why this not? Is... <laughs> now, this got to be what w... he's thinking. I now, can't wait to see w the show next week. It'll be a lot of why nots, I'm afraid. Now, this says here that WCW.com is reporting that they will air Thunder on the 28th. That's interesting. We'll try to find out about that. I was under the assumption they had already scheduled a movie on the 28th for uh, TBS. Maybe it's Thunder know, in Paradise, and it's a typo. <laughs> Uh, will Time Warner still have to pay Nash and Page since WCW fold? That all depends on how everything works out with McMahon. I think no one, there, there is no answer to that question yet. Uh, let's see. Uh, you said that even though wrestling was making tons of money for USA, they don't want wrestling. Why is that? I think we heard that quote from Barry Diller. I think he was, didn't like it. Nope. Um, this is from John. He goes, maybe everyone is still in denial because the thought of only one major company is just too strange and too scary. I know speculation is all fun and all, but are you guys ever going to feel stupid if it turns out to be a work? <laughs> I don't even know why people are still doing this. Um, you know, <laughs> I don't know what to say. It's not a work. It's not like feel stupid. You know, it's like this is this is not this is not the Survivor Series, which was also pretty obvious. But that's another. But yeah, I, I, it's not the Survivor Series. It's not that Hogan and Russo garbage from from. I you mean, know, at that least paper. Survivor Series could have been a work. It could have been. You know, there was That's nothing right. that happened that, uh, you know, absolutely 150% ensured that it was real. Yeah. This, okay, here, let, the show I'm, canceled. I'm say, okay, this is, what. okay, one, it's been canceled. Number two, and this, I want to make this clear, okay, for this to be a work, okay, everyone in the WWF would have to be involved in the work. Why would they be involved in this work? Why would they be negotiating with the WWF and almost selling it if this was a war? I mean, I don't, I don't even want to even discuss this anymore. It's not, <laughs> yeah. you, you know, it's like, what, it's like Eric Bischoff going to go to Jamie Kellner and in, in his first act as president go, go or, or, or CEO of Turner Television go, Jamie, I got this wrestling angle. You go on and tell the New York Times and everyone in the world that we're canceling wrestling, but it's really a work. You know, what's he going to say? He's going to go, who are you? <laughs> Just shows you what a con business we're in. I know. I mean, people have been conned for so long that they. I think that there's this this feeling. Well, you know, and Mike, I'm sure you know this. Oh yeah. A lot of the wrestlers, you know, a lot of the wrestlers really do believe that, but they I've don't. I've talked to really a few of them today who do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I mean, they don't under. You know, they don't. They don't understand that. Uh, you know, it's like, you know, what, you know, to Jamie Kellner, what's Eric Bischoff? Yeah, right. I mean, it's just a guy. It's just a guy he doesn't want around. <laughs> That's right. Uh, this is from Chris in Minnesota. He goes, how close was the WWF to bankruptcy in the WCW hot period? I don't think they were really. I don't think they were really that close to bankruptcy, but they were losing a lot of money, and they did take out some pretty decent sized loans to keep going. Uh, it was it was rough, but it would have faded ever... down before it would have gone bankrupt, though. And you know, the other thing that they could have done is they could have always sold stock in the company. Because, you know, at that point in time, the McMahon's owned 100 percent of the company. They never even sold stock to other people until. You know the good period, and they, you know, that's when like there was a lot of rumors that like they were going to be go belly up in six months. And I said, look, you know, they could sell forty nine percent of this company, and McMahon would still have controlling interests, and there, there's plenty of people who would want to buy the WWF, so into the WWF. So until we start hearing that they're selling their percentage of their of the company, I don't, I don't think it's death's door. I don't think they were ever close to death's door. Now, if if USA Network would have canceled them, which came very close to happening, and they would have had it, and they um, then they would not have been able to get a, a strong cable outlet, which is possible given that it's wrestling. That could have been the death knell. It, it, there was, there was, in, in, in the history of wrestling, when we look back on it, especially the modern history, the major points are not necessarily things that happen in wrestling or wrestling angles, but Ted Turner's decision to buy the company, 
because um, if he just had not bought the company, nobody else would have from Jim Crockett, and the thing would end in, in you know, probably 88, 89. Um, you know, just, you know, things like uh, this decision by Jamie Kellner. I mean, those, that, those are, that's the history of wrestling is being shaped by those kind of decisions as much as by good booking, bad booking. Not that that doesn't have to do with it as well. Uh, let's see. Do you think we'll see Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania? Uh, I would almost be sure that we... Not, yeah, I'd be pretty sure that we will. Um, have you ever done a column that discusses whether wrestlers are independent contractors or employees? I understand the perception they're independent contractors, but is that a reality? They're, they're not independent contractors, no. I mean, they're labeled it for tax purposes. Um, that's kind of a fraud. By the way, I, I don't know why this brings to my head, but uh, during the break, Al called Tom Zink, so he's going to be on the show in a couple weeks. Maybe even sooner than that. So he'll be on really soon. Why isn't the WWF hyping the un Undertaker's Actually, Dave, Undertaker? I don't mean to interrupt, but I have Tom Zink on the on my other phone right here. He's going to do the show uh, April 3rd. Okay, well, there you go. Cool. That's the date. Why isn't the WWF hyping that the Undertaker's undefeated at WrestleMania? Uh, I think... They don't the hype those things. They could. They didn't even mention Rock won his sixth title and broke the record. Uh, that's right. They never did on television, did they? Nope. Yeah. Uh, let's see, since at WrestleMania it looks like a three-way match, Edge and Christian with Rhino, the Dudleys with Spike, the Hardys with their partner. I'm thinking the Hardys partner could be Jerry. Um, might be Jerry Lynn. Might be. Uh, let's see. Do you think we'll see any WCW wrestlers at WrestleMania? Shane Helms now. Yeah, yeah. Do you think we'll see any WCW wrestlers at WrestleMania? Wouldn't, it depends on, uh, timing of everything. Uh, it wouldn't be a surprise at this point. I was wondering how the WF Fanatics series pay-per-views were doing. I saw two of them. Mick Foley was pretty funny. What was the buys of Royal Rumble and No Way Out? Royal Rumble was way down from uh, the year before. No Way Out was actually much better than I expected, although down, also down from the year before. Um, I think No Way Out was about 550,000 buys, and God, I'm thinking uh, Rumble was like, I mean, 575. Does it sound right? I forget the number now. Yeah, yeah, it was right in that range. Right in that range. It was like 1.3 buy rates, I think. So that would be 520. Yeah, like 550. Uh, let's see. Do you think Steiner will drop the belt Monday? And if he's there, we don't, we don't even... Mike, have you heard anything? Is Steiner going to be there Monday? I, you know, I don't know how he's going to work. I've talked to a few people who said he is in tremendous pain. I mean, beside his back, you know, he has, you know, no feeling below his knee, and I don't know how he's going to work that match. I mean, I guess he'll he'll be on the show, but um, I don't know how he's going to work a match. Mm-hmm. Uh... Let's see. Of all the talented WCW guys now available, wouldn't it be sad if they have a job? They don't get a job, but Ming has a three-year deal. <laughs> Wrestling is not fair. That's all I can say. Uh, that could be the name of your book. <laughs> <laughs> I know, really. Uh, I'll read this one and then we'll, we'll start going phone calls. Uh, just in terms of investment, apart, apart from anything having to do with the WF's business, Vince could buy WCW now for next to nothing, rebuild it to the level it was in 1998, and then sell it in a couple of years for ten times what he paid for it. Oh yeah. Why would he want to do that? Why would he want to? He's got a monopoly. Why would you sell and put someone in competition with yourself when you have a monopoly business? Unless he's forced by the govern, government to divest himself, in which case, then then actually that actually doesn't make sense if, if that's the case. Um, plus, if the people he sold it to knew nothing about wrestling, WCW wouldn't even be much competition to him after he sold it. That's true. But you don't put someone. And then it would die again, and he would buy, and it would just be a cycle. Yeah. Uh, since SmackDown is diluted Raw and WWF product, maybe Vince could cancel it as a WWF show and fulfill his commitment to UPN by putting a WCW show on UPN and maybe moving it to Monday and compete with himself. <laughs> they are not. I will tell you this. I will tell you this from talking to people at the WWF. There will be no other wrestling on Monday nights. That is for sure. They will not. They, that, that, may be, that may be one of the things that they're the happiest about is that they're getting another... You know those that uh, SmackDown rating, which is was a four six, and it's been hovering in the five range. That SmackDown rate, I mean, it's SmackDown. What am I saying? The Raw rating's going up a half a point uh, without any competition, at least theoretically. Uh, let me just finish this one real quick. Uh, let's see. It's diff okay, if, if Vince buys WCW and runs it as a separate company, what do you think the odds are of keeping Bischoff for an on-air role? Uh, it'd be hard. I wouldn't. I, rule wouldn't it out. I wouldn't say it's impossible. No, I wouldn't say it's impossible either. Bischoff would be the perfect person, even better than Flair, to lead WCW in a feud with Vince. If they I don't know if he'd be better than push. Flair, but he actually, when you think about it, would be a pretty damn good choice. Um, he'd be really good in that role. Yeah. Also, could you please exactly could you please explain how Ted Turner went from holding majority of Time Warner stock before the merger being totally out of power after the merger? This always perplexed me. I'm sure the last thing on Turner's mind is WCW. Why couldn't he buy WCW back with his own money and then try to get it on another network? 
because all of his networks are run by Jamie Kellner. So uh, that's the basic gist. And, and he's not going to buy something to provide programming for a network that's competition with his own networks. Yeah. Um, so anyway, that's from Johnny Kramer. Let's go to Charles. Charles, how are you? I'm terrible, Dave. This is this is just so depressing. <laughs> Mr. Mooneyham, uh, Brian, how are you? Hey, Charles. Um, Dave, did you get the email I sent you last night? Yes, I did. Okay. I was up late, so I did. <laughs> okay. Well, enough said on that. Um, I was just listening to the earlier conversation, and I'll tell you, from my own perspective, Mr. Mooneyham, I'm uh, almost 38 years old, and yeah. I grew up in the Carolinas, and then okay. later moved to California, but I grew up on that Mid-Atlantic Jim Crockett promotion. Good stuff. Along with Championship Wrestling from Florida. And oh, yeah. To me, the death nail started when... They finally, when Bischoff finally was delivered, you know, the dream matches that the, the fans from, from that area wanted to see. We wanted to see our NWA legends yep. fight the WWF legends. And when they did it and they completely squashed and made all the NWA legends look horrible and then almost systematically killed all of those territories, that, that was kind of the start of it for me. Yeah, well, I mean, it was the start of it for a lot of fans down here and, um, you know, I don't think Eric made any secret about the fact that uh, he really didn't like that Southern influence in his wrestling. You know, as he said, it's not wrestling; it's it's uh, it was his style of wrestling, and, it, and 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 that Southern influence didn't have a place. I mean, you know, in a way, it was kind of like Vince Russo's thinking. Yeah, I just don't understand from a business standpoint how can you not at least make the illusion of satisfying that specific demographic while at the same time catering to the other you know it, yeah. it just didn't make sense why why kill money well you're, you're no exactly sense. right and i think we see the result of that as we speak yeah well I, can, I, can i tell you something about that it's because in that period when that was going on they were making they were actually making so much money that they thought it would never end mm -hmm. and 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 when you're making so much money and you think it'll never end you start doing stuff for yourself rather than for for the fans yeah and that's and that's what killed it. And when they finally realized what they had done, it was too late to turn it around. And also, they didn't know how to turn it around because everything they tried to do to turn it around only made it worse. I think we talked about this before. It's like when things are hot, you can almost do no wrong for a while. Yeah. But then when they start going downhill, you're screwed. Yeah. Boy, it just it just makes no sense that there wasn't some some type of analyst involved, though. They could do there some was. Type of Remember, we, we, Brian and I just talked about this. There was. Um, like it was too late. It was when Russo was there, they commissioned a study, WCW did, to find out, you know, what happened to all those fans that turned off, and they presented the results of the study, and, and there was trials of everything you would think. There were no surprises in that study. Someone had actually read it to me, and Vince Russo looked at it and just got pissed off and wouldn't do any of it, and the guy who spent a year plus on that a study year. quit the company. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, a year polling fans on why do you not like it, current fans on what you like and don't like, and former fans on why you're not fans, and it was the same thing. They don't want the skits. They don't want the silliness. They don't want women that don't know how to wrestle, wrestle. All those things that Russo was actually doing at that time, Russo ignored it because it was like that's all he knew. You know, they, you know, and the fans the guy, be wrong. Yeah, it, 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 yeah, wrestling fans don't know what they want. It's almost unforgivable. guy. Actually, it is unforgivable. Um, well, let, let me get your opinion on this. Uh, what do you gentlemen feel is the likelihood of some of the – top WCW talent kind of getting together and making an informal pact that they won't go to Vince uh, at least for a period of time and try to wait for Eric to put together a deal. Not going to happen unless... It's just not going to happen. Because because the fact that Eric couldn't make the deal this week, uh, you can't sit and wait for him. It, look at Paul E. I mean, that's what all the ECW guys, in, in, not on purpose, but ended up doing. Because yeah. Paul forced them to do that. And may, clearly the television industry is not enamored with professional wrestling right now because you would think when ECW was was a free agent and, and, and you have all these cable stations that want something that somebody would bite and go, hey, you know, we can get something that's going to deliver us a consistent 1.0 and nobody did. Now with WCW out there, it was like shouldn't, you know, with all of these different cable stations out there, knowing that, you know, they could get WCW, which can do a consistent 2.1 on Monday or or whatever, and that's and that's only with an absolutely horrible product that's been killed for years. I mean, with a good product, they'd be doing easily double that. The the, the bottom line is nobody bit. So that's how that's that's to me that's the scariest part of the story is that aspect that that television, which is the lifeblood of this business, 
it does not see wrestling in a very positive light right now. That's pro that's the, that, that's the scariest part for the future of all of this. That, that's really horrible. Um, well, that gives me a good transition to my next question, Dave. Um, the the unceremonious demise of ECW is there something that we don't know? Did, did Paul ever kind of get together and with with the guys that you know loyally kind of sweat? and bled for him and, you know, believed in his dream and, you know, do anything for them informally, some type of acknowledgement or anything, or it no. just kind of end the way that we saw it end. And no, as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, there are guys in the company who are still thinking that it's alive because Paul hasn't told him it's dead, and Paul hasn't really talked to a lot of the guys, and I was talking to one of the guys in the company this morning, actually, and he was just going like, you know, it's amazing that, you know, like, even Dreamer and them don't even hear from Paul anymore. You know, I, I don't know the guy personally, and I used to have, like, a lot of respect for him, but that, that shows just almost no character at all. I mean, well, this, I mean I, I think we're that talking about actually, the livelihood of these guys and their families. Yeah, I think that there's probably reasons for it. Uh, I don't know what they are. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, I, I, you know, I, I, I talked with him a, a lot about it when it was going down, and I think that there, there was a lot of reasons having to do with uh, money that's owed from sources to ECW that if he officially makes an announcement, you know, that the companies won't pay him, and I think he's waiting to get that money before he's going to make any official announcement. Well, I can you know, even though obviously we all know what, what the reality is. Right. Well, I can understand that aspect of it, but I mean just something informal that, that's not legally binding, you know, just, as, you know, as men and as friends and, you know, and as former, you know, well, 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 getting together you're, you're right, guys. but you're, you're, you're right, but you know, you know some Monday night, right? It's, it's, uh, and Sunday and Monday, now what, WCW didn't tell their guys anything either. Yeah, that's they were just told, you know, come to work on Monday, and and that's it. And the employees, you know, they were all told, what day is it? Tuesday of next week or Wednesday? When they have that meeting at the power plant? There's a meeting at the power plant. They weren't told anything, and that memo just goes, you know, we're going on a hiatus, you know, and, and it's like, you know, then later that same day, you know, you're you get the memo at your work, we're going on a hiatus. And then you go home and it's on the news that it's not a hiatus. It's over. Yeah. You know, even on the, even at this point, the company can't tell them the truth, and they only got to work there another week. It's not real till it happens on TV. Man, this is horrible. Yeah. Well, I guess my my last uh, question is this: to get you guys thought on this. Um, in the eventuality that Vince is the monopoly and controls all wrestling, I guess the the American product with national distribution. Do you think he's going to realize that? you at least need the illusion of diversity in the product or, or is all we have to look forward to is wrestling through the eyes of Vince McMahon. Well, that's 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 what his goal has been. You gotta remember that Vince has had a mission since nineteen eighty two. And he came close many, many times and then, you know, a few years ago we, we all thought, you know what? As close as he came he's never gonna get it. And now he's got it. And I don't think that now after twenty years of chasing this thing and that he's got it He's not going to go, you know what, this whole thing I was chasing for 20 years was something I shouldn't have ever wanted to have. I think he's going to be, especially with the, the things he's got going on in his other business, I think he's just going to be really happy he has it. What do you and think that he, that he finally, I mean, down the road, he might, uh, if things go really bad, he may think Yeah, he might realize right that. The, yeah, but right now, right now, I mean, he's going like, I beat Ted Turner. Yep. After all these years, I, you know, I mean, you can, you know, you know how Vince is. I beat Ted Turner. Well, I mean, he, for, you know, I mean, I mean, beat him, beat him to where he's done, not beat him to where I'm beating him every week. I mean, beat him to where he sold me his company. Beat him. Yeah. Is, isn't that victory enough? Though, I mean, doesn't he realize that if 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 it's just his product with nothing else to play off of, you know, people will eventually get tired of it. That I mean, you know, won't his business acumen kick in over his ego and say, I've got to at least put the illusion of more than one product out there and let maybe Ross or or one of those guys run one of my companies. Maybe. I, I don't think it's going to happen. I don't. I don't know that it's going to happen right now because again, what he, you know, remember all those years. You know, he tried to pretend there was nobody yeah, out there. Yeah. So now, now, um, I, I, you know, I don't know. I don't know what his mentality is going to be on that. But you're right. They, they, it's, it's better to have the illusion of competition, even if you're running both sides. Exactly. Uh, this says Brian. Quit trying to be funny on the polls. David Arquette now has 10% of the vote. What are you talking about? The poll they put up for uh, who should be the champion at the end of the show Monday night. I didn't put that poll up. You didn't? No. Well, who did? It wasn't me. It's See, Jeff like a Merritt. couple of weeks ago, I, I got behind on the poll again, 
And I yeah. wanted to put a new poll, and there was one up there. It's Jeff Merrick or Dan Lebransky. Yeah, so I think they've been putting polls up, so I haven't got around to doing okay. another one because they're always up there. Well, so do not blame like... me for today's poll or any of the polls right now. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Got so many emails here. Let's see. I believe a large part of WCW's rapid demise can be put on their inability to respond to the WF's giant step in production in the late 1990s. To me, every time I watched Nitro Thunder, I was instantly hit with the impression the show was second rate when compared to WF, even though at times it wasn't. Had someone at WCW been able to produce a quality polished product of the WS, I believe people could have overlooked or even remained blissfully unaware of their mistakes. Uh, no, the mistakes were too big. I don't, I don't buy it. With a second rate look, people are less forgiving. Actually, Nitro had better production until there was no one in the stands, and when there's no one in the stands, you've got it, you've got to darken it, and that's why the production started looking worse. Raw and SmackDown, I mean, Raw, well, they didn't have SmackDown, but Raw used to have, everyone complained about Raw's production in, like, 96 era because they had to darken it because they had all the empty seats. Yep. Now when Raw and SmackDown are always sellouts, they can light that building up like crazy because there's no empty seats. So that's part of it. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. If I seem to recall you mentioned Ted Turner doesn't have the power to keep WCW on TBS. Isn't he the vice chairman of AOL? If that's the case, it would seem to have more than enough power to overrule any decisions made by Jamie Kellner, who would indirectly report to him. Theoretically, but the, he's, he's not about to he's not about to overrule Kellner's first decision. You know, it's, it's not going to happen. Uh, let's see, Tom Hogan, in the wake of Rick Steiner's utter mauling of Conan, can you listen on some real shoots? It's not a shoot, but it was uncooperation. A case of wrestlers roughing up their opponent. I heard something about with Lex Luger and Bruiser Brody. Can you tell me a little about that? Mike, did you ever see the Lex Luger, Luger and Bruiser Brody thing? Uh, no, I didn't see the match, but I heard about it. They were in a cage match in Florida around 1986, I'm guessing. Right. And it was Lex Luger. Um, Lex Luger had about two days left in the territory, but it ended up being his last day in the territory. He didn't show up for the last two nights. <laughs> he had a cage match with Bruiser Brody, and Bruiser Brody, for whatever reason, and, and he's dead, so I don't have any idea what it was, just got in the ring, and Lex Luger starts punching him and kicking him, and Bruiser Brody just stands there. And Lex Luger just kind of looks it over, and just climbs out of the cage, doesn't take a shower, grabs his gear, <laughs> takes a taxi, and headed right to Jim Crockett Promotions. <laughs> um, it wasn't, a, you know, Brody, Brody kicked him, you know, stiffed him a few times on kicks early and stuff, but when, when Brody just stood there and would not sell anything, which was totally unprofessional, even though yeah. a lot of people didn't like Luger, and Brody became a cult hero, especially, you know, because few people actually do that in the ring, yeah. but, but, it, but it was unprofessional. Uh, let's see, will the cruiserweight still be involved in WCW if it's bought by WWF? No way of knowing, but most likely no. Um, let's see. What are you guys going to do? Cover two hours of WWF? I know Jap Japan and Indies are cool, but most people don't seem to get them. Uh, we're going to cover whatever's news. What can I say? Uh, there's a lot of stuff. I don't. Even, you know, I had no pro. I would have no problem filling the Observer every week without WCW. Not that I would like it, but it's there's tons of news if you look for it. Uh, this is, if Bret Hart hadn't been released by WCW, then if when Vince buys it, he would have been under contract to Vince, is he now thankful he was released? And Bret would have just quit. Yeah. You know, that's all that would have happened. WCW at one time had the largest stable of wrestlers. If the list of guys gets pared down in bare bones and left with decent, with steady, aggressive workers and a couple of big names, I think a decent hour of TV could be put together. Um, they do it the right way. I, yeah, they've got good workers there. The WF might even be able to use WCW as a farm team bypassing Memphis. Okay, the problem is, if people see WCW as a farm team, it will draw what Memphis draws, which is yeah. 200 people a show. Mm -hmm. People aren't going to go to farm team wrestling. I mean, that's the thing. Uh, after reading Have a Nice Day, how do you think Mick Foley will feel about the possibility of Ric Flair entering the company? Um, you know, there's plenty of people that I'm sure Mick Foley doesn't like, and eh, I don't think that's even an issue. Plus, there's plenty of guys coming in that plenty of guys in the WWF don't like, and it doesn't matter. Bill Goldberg. Oh, yeah. Bill Goldberg. That'll be interesting. So interesting because for money, there's only Bill one Goldberg way to is, do it. Bill Goldberg is guaranteed money, but to do it the right way, you're going to piss everyone in the company off. It's it's really Vince is in a really interesting position with Bill Goldberg. Let's go to Pete in Maryland. Pete, what's going on? It's Keith. Oh, let's go to Keith. Yo. Hey, what's up? Hey, I just got a quick question. I want to hang up because my cell phone bill is going to be enormous. But um. Do you think this whole thing with uh, Vince picking up WCW, if he does it, will cure the staleness of the product problem? It could if it's done right. Of course, you know, years ago, Jim Crockett bought Bill Watts' territory, and Jim Crockett's company was starting to get stale at that time. 
And instead of using the new pro the uh, new talent he picked up to cure the staleness, he just buried it. So you don't you just don't know. There's so much ego involved in these type of things. You just don't know. You don't know how Vince is going to see it. Yeah. Okay, let's go to Patrick in Alabama. Hey, Dave. Hey. Um, I have some questions, but they're really not about WCW. First, these are some pretty old questions that we're just I want answers to. Uh, the first question has to do with Noah and All Japan. When Misawa and everyone left All Japan, why didn't Kawada go with Noah? Because he was going to be the main guy in All Japan, or why? Um, actually, though, the funny part of that was is the feeling from Kawada. This is actually kind of ironic. Was that he had very little time left in his career because he just had a couple of eye operations, and he didn't. You know, the feeling was he probably only had one year left, so he would do the big money feud with New Japan and just kind of get out. And it's funny that he's actually probably, you know, Misawa's shot, and Kobashi's, I, I mean, Kobashi, if he ever wrestles, if Kobashi ever wrestles again, he's out of his mind, he probably will, but this, this, but, but it'd be ridiculous for Kobashi to come back and wrestle, so Kawada's actually gonna, you know, probably outlast both of them now. But, but the reason is he was too banged up, and just figured that if, that if he went with All Japan, that All Japan would become basically a farm system type, you know, interpromotional thing with New Japan, he'd be able to work big dome shows, make a lot of money on that, but not have to work a full schedule. And that would prolong his career. So that was so the So he'll never go to Noah, you don't think? You never say never, but I don't think so. I mean, okay. if All Japan folds, will they take him? Will they take him if he wants to come in? Sure, it's fresh matches. Right. You know, so yeah, I guess you can never... Or maybe he'll go to New Japan as a regular, I don't know. Right. Do you think, um, I don't know, uh, June... How do you... He faced Kobashi... Uh, in December, with that great match in December on the yeah, Akiyama. And Kobashi, right? Is he the future of Noah right now? He better be. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, this is a really, really old question. Uh, Wendy Richter. I read something. There was some kind of small screw job with her. What is that about? It's a big screw job. Or what was the? Not a small job? one. <laughs> um, she was a WF Women's Champion, right? and she went in the ring, and actually before she went in the ring, Gorilla Monsoon, I believe it was Gorilla Monsoon, gave her a contract and said, sign it, and she was like, well, you know, i got to read it first, and it's like, no, sign it, she <laughs> said, well, let me let my lawyer see it, you know, and then I'll, you know, bring it back later, you know, like in a couple of days, and it's like, you better sign it, she went to the ring, didn't sign it, and then all of a sudden, uh, she was in the ring, Mula was her opponent, but theoretically she didn't know it was Mula, that one's a little hard to believe, but whatever it was. Mula was dressed up as Spider Lady in like this costume, and all of a sudden the referee counted one, two, three, and she lost a match that she thought she was going to win. Oh, okay. Oh, and she right. never now, wrestled she another. And the she contract. Never... It still would have been Mula in the ring, right? Right, but I think Mula would have know would have gotten the signal from someone, and and everything would have been fine. Yeah, so she had to know it was Mula. I've got that part. Yeah, I, it, we've talked about that before because I think she would be able to smell Mula just because they've worked <laughs> together so many times. I mean, she'd probably touch that arm, and even with a full body suit. So, that wrinkly 65 year old arm. Year old arm. <laughs> yeah, it's not. I mean, you know, the woman who, um, someone emailed me and said that the woman who was Spider Lady before was Lisa Sliwa, who was like, you know, 25 years old or 27 yeah. years old. So I think, I think she had to figure it, figure it out that it was Mula. But as far as, um, yeah, you know, the, the rest of that, though, she, she expected that she was going to win that match and they double crossed and she never worked for the company again. Oh, I wonder okay. if Mula did the old hard way or easy way comment. <laughs> <laughs> Um, also, I read a lot about an apocalypse angle that was supposed to happen in WCW a long time ago. What was that all about? I don't know. Apocalypse. It didn't ring a bell to me. Okay, I just read some, like, somebody was talking about they should have done an apocalypse angle with Malenko. And oh, I think they were talking about doing, like, another Four Horsemen with, like, the younger guys. Oh, the Four like, Horsemen of the Apocalypse. The that was Pillman's around. idea to feud with the Four Horsemen. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah Pillman was going to have his own happen. Four Horsemen to feud with the original Four Horsemen. Yeah, because okay, I remember that angle, too, yeah. What? Well, it was going to be the reason because they didn't want Jared and the Horseman. Anyways, uh, the, why didn't that ever happen? Mm. Plans changed every hour. Yeah, no. it just didn't happen. I don't know. Okay. And, and, you know, it may you know it may have been on that one too. Is that um, Pillman may you know maybe maybe Pillman left the company and and you know or who knows? Yeah. You know, I, I mean, I don't remember the exact time of all that, but I do remember Pillman. You know, Pillman was supposed to run. It was going to be where Benoit would get his first big push. You know, he was going to have his four horsemen of the apocalypse against the, like, the Ric Flair Arn Anderson four horsemen. Okay. I just have three more questions. First question, which match won match of the year for last year? Um, in what poll? In our poll, it was uh, Viano 
Tercera against Atlantis. Okay. Um, who do you think's in the running for right now this year for match of the year? Hunter and Steve Austin. Uh, probably more than any other match, right? Okay, so nothing from they Noah know. or anything yet. Uh, I haven't seen anything from, and I, I've watched a decent amount of Noah. Nothing from Noah. I mean, to me, uh, uh, there was a match in December, the Kawada Masafuchi against Izuka and Nagata match, which to me was the best match I've seen this year. Right. Or even though it actually was technically last year, but that that was that was the only five star match that I can recall uh, in the last couple of months. Um, Kawada Sasaki from the Tokyo Dome was an excellent match. I don't know that it was better than Hunter and Austin. It's a different match, it's a different style too. You know, right. it's, you know, I mean, you know, they didn't have, you know, if they didn't get to use barbed wire, baseball bats, and sledgehammers. You know what I mean? They had to do it just on their wrestling. I mean, if you just move for move wrestling, they were better. But you know, just move for move wrestling. You know, I mean, Rock and Kurt Angle have had some awesome matches this year. Yeah, that's true. Um, would it be possible to get anybody from Noah on your TV show, like Masawa or anyone? I don't know if they speak English well enough. Or okay. would be willing to do it. It'd be it'd be a tough one to do. If if um I mean I I would love to get Vader on. We've tried and we'll continue to try. So you know that how would probably you, be the best bet. How are you guys are you able to see the Noah and All Japan pay per views live or do you get tape delay? A tape delay, we can't see them live. Okay. I mean I get people people from Japan send me videotapes. Oh, okay. All yeah. right. So Okay. All right, thank you. Okay, you're very welcome. Uh, let's go. This is from Elliot, who's been reading your column for a long time, Mike. He goes, just let Mike know. I read his column every week, and it's always a good read. Um, the articles on Art Bar, Boris Malenko, and Ted DiBiase are my three favorite articles that he's written. So, well, thanks, uh, Elliot. Yeah, I remember the Art Bar one. That was an awesome article. Thanks. You you had some stuff. What was it? Scott Scott Hall stuff. You've done some great stuff on Scott oh, yeah, Hall yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, he's sort of an interesting character, isn't he? <laughs> You know, he's, he's doing he's doing all right right now in Japan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From, from all I've heard, yeah. yeah. I think he's got a... Uh, don't they have that show in Florida, like, um, uh, Friday night? <laughs> yeah, it's Friday night, yeah. 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 <laughs> the photos in Baby, Baby Doll's photos were of Dusty kissing his own white ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's see. Uh, let me see. Um... You see, I talked to you a couple of times. I agree with your caller that it's the end of an era in the South. It's also the end of an era for me. I grew up during the Paul Bosch era in Houston, Texas. Sting, DiBiase, and the Steiners ended up in WCW. Actually, DiBiase didn't end up in WCW. Sting and the Steiners did. So it's like the end of Houston Wrestling 2, which I guess was a, at one time was a good wrestling town. Oh, yeah. Now I live in San Diego, and I guess I have to go to San Bernardino to see wrestling. Uh, it says, why didn't AOL Time Warner help WCW out of this mess? Because they didn't want to. Uh, let's see. Do, do you think the potential of WWF buying WCW will have any impact on Jerry Lawler? Yeah, he's not going to be able to go to WCW nearly as easy. <laughs> oh my God! Jerry Lawler okay. is—he's uh, going to have some trouble getting work in the big time. You know, we—we got—we got to do a break, Mike, real quick. Were you surprised at all at what happened with uh, Jerry Lawler over the weekend in Memphis and everything, and just how? I mean, it's, it's that part of Vince McMahon that a lot of people don't want to acknowledge, but it, it's sure there. I mean, it's like if you don't cross, if you cross him, that's it. you know, it's like he'll go out of his way to get you. That's it. It's over. No, it didn't surprise me at all. Um, you're right. You don't cross Vince. I mean, he doesn't. Uh, he doesn't forget an enemy. Uh, let's see. Just a, this is from Andrew Nelson, who says that uh, this is about the email that said WCW.com said Thunder would air next week. I went through the site. It doesn't say anything like that at all. In fact, it specifically says tonight's Thunder is the season finale. <laughs> oh God. Uh, I heard Ric Flair cuts a good promo on the show tonight also. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. And I heard that the Cruiserweight six-man tag is really good. I heard it's actually better than a usual show. Usual Thunder, which... <laughs> a lot of those Thunders of late. Saving the best Ooh. for last. <laughs> oh, I got a feeling the last Nitro will be good, you know? I oh, hope. Yeah. Uh, let's see. What do you tell the WCW wrestlers that believe this whole thing is a work? Um, I just tell them it's not. Mike, what do you tell them? <laughs> <laughs> the WCW guys? You know, the ones who, actually, you know, the ones that have been talking to me because they've been, follow, the ones who have been talking to me know how close I've been following it, and they, they know, I mean, they know without even thinking about it, yeah. and they kind of are laughing at the fact that the other guys just are not accepting it. The ones that I talk to, I mean, I haven't really talked to anyone um, 
you know, who, who still thinks it's a work, but I do know that, you know, mon- you know especially Sunday, yeah. and Monday too, yeah. you know, a lot of the guys, Sunday night, a lot of the guys were just like, well, you know it's a work, yeah. you, you know it's a work, and it's like, well, it's not. I think it'll become clearer to them next week. Yeah. Uh, this is from Stephen Elliott, who goes, perhaps the biggest downfall was the inmates took over the asylum. They had some of the most talented wrestlers in the world on their roster. The only problem is the most talented wrestlers on the, in the company were kept down by power-hungry egomaniacs like Hogan and Nash. I'll tell you what, we should do a poll in a couple days on, on the number one man to blame. Because I've talked to a couple people in the company. You know, who, you know whose name comes up more than any other name as the number one man to blame for this? I bet they say Nash. No, Hogan. Really? Yep. But we should... You that would not Hogan be Nash, my uh, pick. Bischoff, but... Russo. Would you say Russo? I would say Russo. Who would you say, Mike? Um, it's, it's close between Hogan and Nash. Russo came in kind of late. I mean, everybody contributed in, you know, in his own right. But, you know, when you're talking about really a lot of angles that were killed because of an individual, you know, it would um, it would be hard to say Hogan's not the guy. Uh, let's see. Do you think any book publisher will approach WCW talent to write tell all about the final months of WCW? There are so many choices to tell the recent, real story from the inside. Who, if inside, who, if anyone, could tell the story both honestly and intelligently? Mike Tenay. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's sitting there watching everything, and he probably has more product knowledge of wrestling than maybe anyone in this entire world. <laughs> I mean, he's he's really right up there because he's. He's been following wrestling since the 60s, and he's, a, you know, I mean, oh, Mike, you know him real well. Oh, yeah. He's a really smart guy when it comes to this business. One of yeah. the smartest that I've ever come across. Yeah, he is. Uh, let's see. I realized that Ric Flair was 50 at the time, but he was getting the loudest cheers. Don't you think it would have been smart to have him beat Hogan at Super Brawl two years ago? His response was rivaling Austin. I had trouble watching it after that. The crowd did not seem to cheer for Flair as much after that when they did the double turn. Um... You know, that wouldn't have made a difference in the long run, though. They didn't cheer for Flair as much after he turned heel. <laughs> that is a revelation. <laughs> let's, go to, let's go to Rob. Rob, what's going on? Thank God, man. I tell you what, this is a great show, but uh, I didn't think I was going to get on. It's good, to, it's, good, it's good to be on. I wanted to ask you a question. It's funny that you said that uh, we haven't mentioned Jerry Lawler. I don't know how. I, I had, had to stop subscribing to the newsletter. I, I don't get it, and I get the show periodically. How did Jerry Lawler get fired? I just don't know. Uh, he didn't get fired. He quit. Why? Uh, because they fired his wife, and he said if she goes, I go, and Vince is not in a really good mood these days. <laughs> so he said, oh, yeah, thank you very much for your service. <laughs> and uh, then that was it. He chose well, the wrong football season to walk out. <laughs> so he, didn't put, he did this thing to him in Memphis because he was upset at him for quitting? Oh, the thing in Memphis over the weekend? Um yeah, yeah. He basically told Randy Hales that if Jerry Lawler's on our TV, then we're pulling all the guys off of off of the TV. And Randy Hales picked Jerry Lawler, which is probably, uh, I, I guess it's the you know his his loyalty is the ratings of that show, and Jerry Lawler means more of the ratings than every WWF developmental guy, developmental guy combined. So um, <laughs> even Pete Gas, right choice. what? Pete uh, Pete Gas. <laughs> Pete Gass was his champion and Pete Gass never dropped the title. The WWF said, you know, Randy, you know, we'll let Pete drop that title in the ring if you just keep Jerry off for one more week. <laughs> Randy said, that's okay. I'll just vacate it. <laughs> that's funny. Hey, uh, I heard the course of Vince on Costas and uh, it was interesting as all get out, but it was brought up once before, maybe more times. Have you ever tried to get Vince McMahon on your show? And if he did go on it, <laughs> would it be basically the same thing? Because you know you could see through all the BS he usually gives the mainstream media. Yeah, I, you know he won't even let his guys come on. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh god, uh, you know, you know what? Uh, Why? Well, I, I, I will. I will specifically invite him tomorrow. Hey, who knows? You yeah. know he can't call you to be on the show. It's Vince McMahon. He has that big ego, you know? You have to call him. I don't think we'll be able to contact him tomorrow. Isn't he doing Mike and the Mad Dog here in New York on WFA? No, but I can always leave a message. No, I, I know. I'm actually going to be taping that show tomorrow. Hopefully we'll be able to Oh, he's going to be on Stern tomorrow, too. Oh, he's going to be on Stern. Wonderful. Well, we'll he's going to be on Stern in the morning and Mike and the Mad Dog in the afternoon. So Vince is making his media rounds. I'm sure his head will be spinning after both of those programs. <laughs> Uh, that'll be interesting with Stern. Of course, Stern knows a lot less about wrestling than Costas. I don't know what Mike and the Mad Dog. Mike and the Mad Dog said they weren't even going to talk wrestling. They were going to talk XFL. But they, but they were now. See now, what they where they put themselves in a corner. Mike and the Mad Dog is they have been telling people that they will do a better job than Costas. So now they have to. 
If it was just me, I wouldn't say I'll do a better job than Costas because I won't. <laughs> I'll just say I'll do my best. But I noticed you're very gentle with a lot of guests that are on that you might have said bad things about in the past in your newsletters. And uh, when they're on the show, you're very gentle. You don't like, oh, hey, that's not true or anything like that. Well, I don't know. Sometimes I do. Yeah, sometimes. If it's really yeah, bad. I, if it's really bad, you have to say it. Yeah, I mean, I remember when Vince Russo was on, and uh, well, we had to give him a chance to talk. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, do you think it would basically? Do you think he'd be very defensive with you, like uh, he was with Costas? Or it depends on how it went. It depends on how it went. You know, I've I've had many conversations with Vince. And I'll tell you, 75% of them, maybe 85% of them, have been very pleasant, not defensive, very easy conversations. The other 15% we were yelling at each other, but, hmm. you know, maybe even 10%. I mean, most of them have been pretty, they, they, most of them have been no problems. Hmm. One or two big fights, you know, a couple of arguments Has where he got mad at me because um, um, I was just jealous because the Ultimate Warrior had the discipline to eat right and train twice oh, a day. And, <laughs> and I gave him that name, the Anabolic Warrior. <laughs> Uh, I wanted to ask you, uh, the WCW wrestlers, have, has Vince come right out and said, or any of the WWF head office come right out and said, they want this person or that person, like Hogan, Nash, Goldberg? Or, um, or no, I don't want to say anything publicly, no. No? No, not yet. I think that we'll probably be hearing a lot of uh, stuff in the next you know, week or so. Um, maybe we won't. Maybe they'll just show up on TV and they'll be real quiet. I wouldn't be surprised if that, they take that tack, too. Uh, and this is a really whack, really whack uh, theory I got here. And of course, there's so many whack theories out on the internet. I just came up with it, and I'm just curious if you think this is just completely impossible. Do you think Vince has is basically has Paul Heyman and all the ECW guys in the show? When WCW goes off the air, at that point he has a monopoly. Now, do you think he could possibly just be trying to keep Paul alive and his ECW alive at that moment, to where they're around but they're so minor league compared to him? So the government wouldn't intervene in uh, the business. You mean? I mean, I I wouldn't be surprised if he would like you know do a minor league. The thing with the, with, the, with the ECW is, and why he didn't buy it, and why he will buy WCW is because with ECW to buy it, you'd have to take over the debt. Whereas in the WCW, Time Warner will take care of the debt. They just want out of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he's not buying. He's not buying all those all that debt. ECW is buying. You know, why would he need to spend seven million dollars on a debt when he can just have it for for nothing? That's true. That's true. All right, guys. Hey, I enjoy your show quite a bit. And uh, so, hi to you too, Mike. Thanks, guys. All right, take it easy. Okay, let's go to Ed in Atlanta. Ed. Yeah, uh, I have a question. With the loss of ECW and WCW, does that make XPW the number two promotion <laughs> in the country? <laughs> uh, <laughs> What's next? If it will make people stop calling, yes. <laughs> um, another quick question. Does Tajiri speak English? Uh, yes. Speak Spanish. Uh, <laughs> he does that too. Cool. Well, if he speaks English, he might get over. Um, and do you <laughs> think if Flair comes to the WWF, would you? I mean, I'd love to see a four horseman. You know, with Flair as a manager, with like Kurt Angle, you know, Edge and Christian, and Jeff Hardy as a as a heel group. Do you think that would happen? No, but I would love it too. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but it's my, it won't happen. Oh, Kurt Kurt Angle, do you think Flair, WWF would ever, you know, cut, uh, sign a deal with one of the? Um, uh, Japan Federation's like no or NJPW because I would I mean it'd be scary how good Kurt Angle would be if he was over there for six months and uh, did some matches with you know Muda or Misawa or Kawada or something like that well, Kawada and Kurt Angle that'd be an incredible match even with the style differences they would just that'd just be incredible yeah he, he would come back like you know the ultimate god of wrestling forever I mean, he may be he yeah. may be in a year mm -hmm. if he doesn't uh, get hurt I'd like to do it with this style, he can wrestle till he's 50. I, I really, I mean, he's, he is he but no one knows much as some of the other guys. that insult, though. Well, yeah, but don't, he, don't he doesn't take like a lot that. of bumps she's, right she's, out of his face. She's, she's, she's scared about him wrestling now because, you know, you gotta remember Kurt Angle took a hell of a beating as an amateur. Yeah. You know, it's not like he came in unscathed. It's like Shamrock, you know. There's a lot of injuries there from amateur wrestling. Yeah. But still, I mean, he is so incredibly much potential, more than anyone ever, in my opinion. Just co coming in this this quick. Yeah, I think he's going to be the next player. What, what do you think, Mike? Since oh man, I saw, I saw potential all over him when he when he first started. Yeah, he is he's absolutely great. Yeah. And um, yeah, he's he's going to he's he's a big time player for sure. Yeah, another one I think would really do good with some seasoning in Japan would be would be uh, uh, Jeff Hardy because over there have have some matches with Ultimo Dragon or 
Hayabusa or something like that. Uh, Hayabusa's pretty much banged up in Ultimo Dragons. Retired. Oh, yeah, sorry. I mean, well, um, I mean, like, I don't know, the Great Suzuki or old Super um, Delphin. I don't know about him anymore. But anyway, Delphin. some of the, you know, their juniors over there. But... Minoru Tanaka is my favorite of those of those guys. And um, yeah, Minoru Tanaka and Jeff Hardy might have a really good match. It's different. Again, again, it's a different style. But Jeff Hardy has wrestled in Japan before, though, when he was Will of the Wisp. Really? I didn't know that. Yeah, he was uh, UWA... I forget the weight division, but he was a UWA champion over in, in Japan and uh, defended the belt a lot in Omega Pro. Well, yeah. well, uh, and uh, enjoy your show. Thanks. Okay, you're very welcome. Let's go to Adam in Tennessee. Adam. Hi, actually, this is Lydia. Oh, well, I don't have you on my list, but you're on. <laughs> What's um, going on? We can hear you. We're here. Well, we can hear you. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I was just calling in to say that I'm sorry to see WCW going. Um, but, however, I have a really good idea on how Vince McMahon can bring the WCW boys in mm -hmm. to WWF. And that is to um, put all the WCW guys in the ring and tell them if they want to keep a job, that they have to be WWF guys. And then that way you see who he's going to keep and who he's not. Um, he's not going to put guys on TV that he's not going to keep unless it's an angle. No. Which would mean they don't have to win. Yeah. And that's not going to happen either. We saw that with the Radicals. They came in and they all lost. Yeah. I just thought it would be a good, good, good way to see who uh, you're going to get to keep on seeing who's going to end up going back to the Indies. Um, yeah, they're not gonna, he's not going to put anyone on TV that he's not keeping, though. That's yeah. something that that's something Russo would do. Yeah. <laughs> to humiliate people on television and show he had power. True. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you very much. Okay, you're very welcome. Uh, I'm not sure who's next, but who's next? Okay, Mike. Hello? Hey, Mike, you, just, uh, you just read my email, but I had a couple things to add. Uh, I think I found a place for Bagwell and Luger, uh, for McMahon. You could put them in uh -huh. the, uh, XFL as quarterbacks with the lack of <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, in the, um, the, uh, gimmick match, how about, uh, Bob Costas and, uh, Eric Bischoff, Vince Russo with his, uh, plastic bat and Dusty's white ass? That would be good. No, but seriously, I, when I said in my email, it's really sad. I grew up, uh, I'm 50. I grew up watching, uh, Bull Curry and Danny McShane and all those guys back in Houston. It was a good town for wrestling, and it's, I feel kind of like Mike does. Goodbye. Yeah, it's, um, you know, it's, it's, it's really, I mean, it's, it's kind of painful, you know. I mean, this was such a, a grand tradition of wrestling, and now, you know, that we're actually uh, five days away from the end, um, it's, it's really sad. Uh, I got something too, real quick, Dave, to tell you. I don't, <laughs> talking about the um, the wrestlers thinking it's a work. I was reading on a not not the uh, board I report for, one of the major boards. Uh, Disco was on a radio station in Atlanta, according to somebody, and um, he still thinks it's a work. <laughs> Unless they're trying to work the fans, I don't know. But you know, you, uh, know what, you know what the saddest thing about this one is? It, it, it's because you know, uh, of of the stuff that, that Bischoff has done, that the guys think that way. And you know what? Let's just say, and it's not. Let's just say that it was a work. Yeah. What? Okay. What? What has just been accomplished? Is, it, is anyone making any money from this? No. <laughs> so so what? So it's like it's like it's like the typical thing. If they fooled everyone in the whole world, and they got Jamie Kellner, and they got Vince McMahon, and they got. Uh, Everyone in, all's conspiring for this, you know, work that we're going to get in the New York Times and everything. When push comes to shove, how does that help anybody? Not at all. And I guess, you know, you keep on top of this <laughs> stuff. I guess you know that the uh, Fushant, uh website has their logo down. The WC logo's off now. Yeah, right. They, they announced yesterday that uh, they pulled out of attempting to buy it because they couldn't make the TV deal with Fox. But anyway, I'm quoting one of the DJs on the station uh, so that Disco doesn't have to uh, have sex with Eric Bischoff anymore to keep his job. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> I'll let you go, Dave. Enjoy your show. Okay, thanks very much. We are totally out of time. I want to thank everyone for emailing in, calling in. Mike, it's great to talk to you again. Same here, and, Dave, Brian. And uh, hopefully the next time we have you on the show, we will have good news to talk about. And uh, anyway, uh, who knows? Maybe we'll we'll, uh, maybe we'll have a new promotion here in the Carolinas, huh? Yeah, maybe Crockett Promotions Three. <laughs> Crockett coming back. I don't, I don't know. <laughs>
I want to remind everyone, tomorrow we're going to have Rico Constantino from Ohio Valley Wrestling. Friday we're going to have superstar Billy Graham. And also, next Wednesday, Jerry the King Lawler. So uh, we'll see you all tomorrow at 5.